saying things like, yeah. your brother learned to tie his shoes when he was your age. Uh, mm, that right. doesn't do any good, you know? It's not motivating right. a child. In fact, that builds resentment. Right. Um, and right. why can't you be still like your sister? Th- those those will build, I mean, our, our desire is to say, look, she's able to do it, you should be able to do it too. I yeah. get that. But by saying it that way, we're saying mm-hmm. she's better, and they're hearing, they're hearing. Right. She is better than yeah. you, he is better than you. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rock Podcast. I'm back today with Sherry Seligson, and we're talking about sibling relationships and the importance of helping our kids to get along with one another. Because if you listen to Monday's episode, which if you missed that, go back and listen to it. But we talked about how when we help our kids to get along with one another as siblings, it really does set them up for success for the rest of their lives. I tell my girls all the time, I'm like, you are always going to encounter difficult people, whether it's at co-op or at work or, you know, in the grocery store. I mean, there's just crazy people everywhere. (laughs) Just don't be that difficult, crazy person. But there are difficult people everywhere. And so when we teach our kids to love one another and to get along and to learn learn how to just deal with conflict and and hard people, it really does set them up for so much more success. And I, I, I really think our world would be a different place. I think marriages would be stronger if we taught our kids how to get along with each other, if they learned how to do that and how to, it, it really, really comes down to selfishness. I mean, if you think about any sibling conflict, it always comes down to sin. And that sin typically is selfishness because it's, I want what I want and I don't want you to have what you want mine, because my mine, needs are, mine. Right. <laughs> mine are, my needs are more important. And, mm-hmm. you know, just as you see it from the time they're one year old and they're wanting to hold tight to that toy that just continues on through their lives. And we do that as adults too. So you know, it's, it's tough, but we're, we're doing our best as parents. And so just being intentional is important. So we're going to keep talking about that. But before we do, I want to say thank you again to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. If you're looking for a homeschool curriculum that meets just about every subject, every grade um, from a biblical worldview, check out BJUPressHomeschool.com. If you're not sure what you need for your child, you can call them, call one of their representatives, and they will help walk you through what you can need. They have video-based uh, learning. They have, uh, and, you know, you can teach it yourself if you want. If you want to get the, the books and teach it, um, do, do the parent-led teaching, you can do that as well. So whatever works best for your family, check them out, bjupresshomeschool.com. Also, I want to say thank you to those of you who continue to support the Schoolhouse Rock to Ministry, whether it's through your financial contributions or through prayer or through emails that you send to us. We are so grateful for you. You can find everything at our website, schoolhouserocked.com. That's where you can find the movie. You can find our blog. You can find just about everything there, including our free download of the Homeschool Survival Kit. Uh, we are here to help you. We want to be a blessing to you. And so go to our website, schoolhouserocked.com, and you can find it all there. Sherry, welcome back. Um, I'm loving this conversation. I love talking about sibling relationships because I have two girls who are siblings and this is a huge part of homeschooling. We've talked about siblings before on the podcast with other guests and I feel like it's one of those topics that we can continue to talk about all the time because it's not like we ever just find the answer. We never just find the one cure. Like, oh, okay, that's the one thing I'm missing and let's just do that and everything's gonna be smooth sailing from here. We are always in a constant battle, it seems, for our children's relationship with one another. And there are some siblings who get along really well all the time or most of the time. And then there's those who just don't get along as well. And and it's hard It's hard to to work through that as parents. And one of the things that I think can be very difficult is boys versus girls and then girls versus girls and boys versus boys. And there's, there's, there are different dynamics on every side of that. So I want to talk for a minute about the difference between boys and girls, because you have three boys, your youngest is a girl, and I'm sure that caused all kinds of drama (laughs) with having her as the baby. And, you know, maybe she had those older brothers who were her protectors, but maybe sometimes not. I don't know. Um, but talk about having been a mom of boys and a girl, what did that look like with their relationship towards one another? Like what differences did you see between the the girl and the boys and how did you help them work through that? Okay. And and just let me do a caveat here. Any anything I share about my kids, I've had permission 
from them <laughs> as adults. I'm like, Good to know. I about the story. So yeah, I mean, the, the younger, the young, the daughter, there were days she'd come down the hall and her hands on her hips. Someone didn't make their bed this morning. And I'm like, <laughs> that's not your responsibility. <laughs> you know, th- there was, there was a mothering need or a, uh, she was, she was very, she was a firstborn daughter and firstborns tend to have that you know, things must be done right, right way. And, and yeah. um, so there was that friction between her and her brothers because she kind of was like a mother to them in some ways. And that's, we'll talk, you know, that's, that's a girl thing in, in many ways. Um, the boys were rougher with each other. Some were rougher than others. Um, we, our, our young, our third child, our third son, we called him Speed because he was a fast runner. But we realized he learned how to run fast because he would do something to one of his older brothers and then run, screaming, oh. you know, like <laughs> flick the ear and then run. And, you know, the older brother would get in trouble at first. And we're like, wait a minute. OK, you're antagonizing them and you're starting it. But, you know, we hear the screaming and we would say, stop behaving like that with your younger brother. Be nice. Right. And so there's this whole dynamic and boys. So starting off boys versus girls, um, there is a, a and we all know physiologically there's difference, but there's a difference in the way that our, the way our brains are wired. Um, male versus female. There's and, and you know testosterone is a thing. It's a hormone that literally floods during development. Literally floods the boy baby's brain, and that mm. causes changes physiologically and how they think, how their brain is wired. Um, girls have more connections between the lobes of the brain, and so they process things connected together. There's more complex um, pieces. When it comes to a situation than a boy, whereas a boy, you know, they're just kind of, I mean, and, and I'm speaking in generalities because we sure. all will have children that don't fit those unique, those averages and that's right. fine. There's nothing wrong with them. God made them perfectly the way they are. But as a whole, boys tend to be more black and white. They tend to, you know, it's it's this or it's that. And it's, you know, th- this is good. This is bad. Or, or, or at least just it's a simple, you, I always knew how my boys were feeling, whether they were happy, mm-hmm. whether they were sad. It was easy to see, whereas my daughter, it, there was more complexity going on. There was more, um, you know, she'd be sad for we don't know why or happy for we don't. I mean, there was just so much more. And then throw in adolescence oh. and and you get even more fun. And then that co- couple that with menopause and that's even right. more fun. <laughs> so, but, but just adding to adolescence, you're going to get young men who are designed to be future heads of household. God made yeah. it that way. So their desire to lead is mm. strong. Their desire to, you know, this is right. This is what we should do. This is how it should be done is yeah. going to cause friction be- with, between their siblings and between mom and dad for that matter. And yeah. so navigating that, you know, this is your place. This is not your responsibility. This is my responsibility over your brothers or your sister. You know, I appreciate that you have this need or desire or interest. And that's where we have to affirm their you know, they're, as they're developing that, you know, even with our daughter coming out, you know, so-and-so didn't make his bed. There's a careful, you know, line between tattling and understanding what's, what should be done and what shouldn't be done. So mm-hmm. we would talk more, more about, you know, here's the positive of this. You understand what needs to be done in the morning. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's something that all of us need to work together, you know, whether it's our morning chores or, you know, how we behave with each other. Um, and yet it's not how we behave in this response, you know, that's a mom or dad mm-hmm. responsibility. You know, I will be checking up on them because that's part of my responsibility. You know, the brother who says, no, we're doing it this way. We're leading, you know, the oldest, older ones tends to lead what the fam- what the kids do because they're older and mm-hmm. they've always had the advantage right. and we're watching this movie or we're playing this game. And the younger ones have kind of had to follow along because that's all they've known. But eventually they're going to yeah. get to a point where they're going to stand up and say, I don't want to do that. I want to do it right. this way because they're unique. And so the older ones mm-hmm. need to learn to defer and need to learn to understand you know, this is a natural inclination that I have to be a leader to, to, and, you know, God wired me this way to want to control the situation, um, more. And, and some of our daughters will be like this too. Um, and yet this is not the place for me to be doing this, or I need to be doing it carefully with, with my siblings. Um, mm-hmm. you know, the boys need to be more tenderhearted to their sisters. The sisters need to be, um, understanding that the boys are going to be more active or physical, or, you know, there's a, there's a whole thinking behind men bonding differently than women. Women tend to bond more communicatively. And so you're going to have more communication with your daughter. The daughter's going to want to talk to the boys, whereas the boys just want to work alongside of each other. Right. And that's bonding. <laughs> you know, I'm playing with my Legos, you're playing with your Legos. We're playing Legos together, but I'm doing my thing, you're right. doing your thing, and we're bonding. 
And yet that's not enough for the girl. She wants to take the horsey and bring it into the castle and talk to you and yeah. make you. And the boy's like, no, 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 no. This is not playing together. This is invading my space. <laughs> and so we have to we have to help them to understand that there's unique differences in the way God made them. And I would continually use that terminology because it takes it off of their responsibility of, um, you know, I've got to be nicer. I've got to be, you know, God made me to be this way and yeah. God gave me these siblings. And so I get to enjoy whatever blessings come from those relationships. Yeah. And it's hard, but there will be positives and I want to see that in the future. And so we're helping them to get a vision for what they're doing as well. So um, that's yeah. just kind of touching the beginnings of that, the you know, male, female differences, yeah. um, age differences affect things too. You've got your sure. olders and then you've got your youngers and they have to, you know, the youngers need to learn to respond. And some of them have such a big age gap that the olders tend to be a little parental to the younger ones. You know, right. we may oh, ask yeah. them to, we may say, can you make breakfast for your, your sister? She's, you know, in a, a high chair and mm -hmm. the brother will do that. Or can, you know, the sister will take care of the younger brother. And can you take him over, you know, over to the swing and swing with him? Mom, he's picking, you know, he's pulling my hair. You know, that's, right. <laughs> there's that whole dynamic. And and yet we're ask, asking them to take on some of that parental parenting type of right. responsibility. And yet they're still siblings. And so right. having to come back and circle back that way, you know, yes, you can teach them this. You know, if you want to teach them how to tie their shoes, by all means, do it. That's great. And I'm proud of you for doing it. And I'm proud of them for learning. And if yeah. they're bucking you right now, you're not to be the one, you know. Yeah, you don't get to discipline them. <laughs> no, no, come to you me, can we teach. can talk about it. Yes. Yeah. And so there's, there's every family's going to have a different dynamic. But again, yeah. I want to keep coming back to the principles behind it, helping them to see their uniqueness, helping them to understand the vantage mm -hmm. point of the others, helping them to understand we are here for each other. We are selections. Mm. We, you know, we share, we do this. This right. is who we are as a family right. because God has given us this unique yeah. situation. Yeah. I've told my girls oftentimes, I'm like, you know, they, you think that the people that you're friends with as kids, especially I think once you get into high school, like we're going to be friends forever, you know, and some of those people you might be, I still have a couple of friends who I've known since my childhood mm -hmm. and we're, we're, I wouldn't say, you know, we're not super close, but we're still in communication with each other. But for the most part, the people who you're friends with in high school and in junior high, they're going to go off and do their own thing. And God uses them during that time of your life. And you may stay good friends and best friends with some of them. But for the most part, they're going to go off and do their own thing. But your sibling will always be your sibling. They're not going anywhere, hopefully. Yeah. And that is that is such an important thing for, I think, our kids to realize is that they're, like, they're stuck here in your family. Like You are family forever. We're not getting rid of each other. So we have to learn how to get along and how to love one another because people will come and go throughout your whole life, but your sibling is your sibling for your entire life. So yeah. uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Sherry. Um, Sherry, I know that as parents, and I've done this myself, um, sometimes we can unknowingly cause rivalry with our kids. And I never try to do that, but sometimes it just happens. I don't know. How, how, <laughs> why does that happen? How can we keep that from happening? And how do we as parents sometimes cause rivalry with our kids? Yeah, you know, it's as, as, as we're parenting, as we're leading them, as we're guiding them, it's frustrating, it's hard comparison, I think, is one of the biggies, you know, the, mm, the frustration. Yeah. Be on guard when you talk to Ask the Lord to give you words because our words can be so, um, they can lift up or they can tear down. And saying things like, yeah. your brother learned to tie his shoes when he was your age, uh, mm, that right. doesn't do any good. You know, it's not motivating right. a child. In fact, that builds resentment. Right. Um, at, right. Why can't you be still like your sister? Th those those will build, I mean, our our desire is to say, look, she's able to do it. You should be able to do it too. I yeah. get that. But by saying it that way, we're saying mm -hmm. she's better and they're hearing, they're hearing. Right. She is better than yeah. you. He is better than you. And that builds right. resentment and distance. That doesn't build togetherness. So really, really try, you know, we know kids develop at a different pace than each right. other. They have different strengths than each other. 
they're going to develop differently. And that's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why homeschooling is so amazing because we can meet their needs as they mature and, you know, the whole academic needs and when they're ready, they don't have to read exactly when they're five years old. You know, it, it's, it right. can be done whenever they're ready. And it's this, this because they're developmentally unique. And the same mm-hmm. thing with our children. They're, you may have one that ties a shoe at three and one that ties a shoe at eight. That's okay. That doesn't make one better than another or better behave. You know, some kids can't control themselves and they're constantly right. bouncing. And, you know, we used to do our our math facts, jumping jacks and uh-huh. running around and bouncing balls because my boys were constantly moving and right. they were paying attention, but they couldn't sit like a girl can sit necessarily. And again, I'm stereotyping here, but it's as a rule, the girls tend to be more prepared for the fine motor skills. They can be, mm-hmm. they can sit. They, My daughter... We would we would have the olders help the younger ones during school, and so my olders would take care of would during a subject with the um, mm-hmm. with some of my other kids. My olders would take the younger my daughter and do something with her, and they're like, "Mom, uh-huh. she wants to play school. Like, how in the <laughs> world? Because she she must have playtime, and she literally wants to play school. She wants me to write spelling words for her. I'm like, well, she's wired that way. That she right. thrives that way, and she's ready for it at this age. Not mm-hmm. all of us are ready for it at that age, and so it's the same idea. And then also we get duplicates, a lot of things so that they don't have to share. Sometimes that's okay. But, you know, if you're buying an iPad for each of your six kids, I would question, I would encourage (laughs) you to question yourself. Um, You know, maybe they need it for academics and that's different. But if you're doing it because you you want them to be able to play on their own separately and not have to share, that's actually doing them a disservice. We want them to learn how to live together in similar spaces because- They are going to be doing that with a spouse <laughs> yeah. and they're going to be working together in similar spaces with coworkers. Right. Even if they're virtually working, there will, right. like you said, other people are going to be in their lives and they need to work with other people. Um, so trying not to get lots of duplicates because you want the peace um, and then mm-hmm. not guiding them through the process of bickering. There will be conflict. There mm-hmm. will be conflict, but you need to give your children proper tools to deal with, which we'll talk about. You know, screaming is yeah. not going to solve anything, and and not nor will always calling for mom and dad solve things. Yeah. We want to have give them the words, the tools, and the abilities to work through conflict. If we're not teaching them how to do that, they're just going to scream every time, or they're going to hit, yeah. or they're going to tear, or break, or whatever, because they don't know what else to do, and they're frustrated. So those are some right. things that I would think you know we need to be mindful of, so that we don't make a situation worse. Yeah, those are great reminders. And it is hard as a parent sometimes to, because I think naturally we compare our kids, not just with each other, but sometimes with other kids, you know, oh, our neighbor's kid is, you know, they know all of their math facts. Why don't you? They're in fifth grade and you're in eighth grade. Why don't you know? You know I mean, there are just, there are a million ways that we can compare <laughs> our yeah. kids to others. And it's, I think sometimes it's hard not to, like we just kind of naturally, oh, well, why aren't you doing that yet? Um, but yes, I, I can see how that would definitely cause some sibling rivalry between our kids and help and and cause them to resent one another. And because they don't see the praise, they do, but they don't remember the praise like they remember the criticism. And that's, I think, part of our just human nature, right? <laughs> right. And you and you may have a a, a people pleasing child, and the people pleasing oh, yeah. child is going to be the one that will always do what mom and dad are asking and, and always right. being, you know, and you're, you're, you know, star student or whatever you want to call it. Right. And the non-people pleasing child, not because they don't want to please people, but the one mm-hmm. who's wired a different way is going to see the, their sibling as this goody two shoes. And what do they do? They go the opposite because right. they think, well, I'm never going to be like that. And yeah. so I'm never going to be praised for this. So I'm just going to go do my own thing. And that's right. usually the opposite. So we really want to be alert to that. We really want to look for the positives yeah. in each of them and help them to see those positives. And again, yeah. they're God-given positives. God knows in his wisdom yeah. what you're going to be like. And I could tell you story after story about my children and their uniqueness that mm-hmm. didn't look so great when they were younger. But yeah. as they got older and I could see what God had for them, I'm like, Lord, that's why you made them this way. That's right. why you gave them this personality. That's why I was banging my head against the wall. <laughs> right. <laughs> because I didn't know what to do. That's what you had for this kid. And giving them that vision too, helping them to see God knows this yeah. is not an unknown journey we're on by God. We just need to be sure. open to, to, you know, being responsible for what he's given us and good stewards and, and do, you know, prayerfully pray, 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 sure. have and use that as a tool. That's a tool. Pray, 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 yeah. because that will help us to refocus and yeah. adjust. 
Did you ever, we've done this with our kids and I'm sure you probably did with your kids, but um, did you ever have your kids say, and this is usually in the heat of battle. Okay. I want you to list three things that you love about your sister (laughs) because I want them to think intentionally about things that they love. And of course, my girls would usually come up with something like, she's got nice hair. She has, you know, good knees. I mean, like it would be the dumbest stuff. Like, no, I want you to praise something about her character, her as a person. Um, and, and it's hard for them, I think, especially in the heat of battle to come up with something nice to say to one another. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, did you do that with yours? We did that a couple of times, but I would get nothing. I can't think of anything. I'm like, (laughs) we don't do it anymore because it doesn't work out very well. (laughs) I mean, sometimes you may have kids who it works great for, and and we do that, you know, when there's not conflict, we'll go around the dinner right. table. What's one nice thing you can say about so and so, or and th- and that helps to affirm in a in a non-threatening, you know, way. Sure. So yes, those are it's a great exercise. But right. for some reason, in my the <laughs> dynamics in my family, they're like, yeah, I can't think of a thing because he's, you know, being right. a pest I'm right now. Super and I, irritated yeah, with him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, the joys of having kids. Well, we're out of time. We're going to talk more tomorrow about sibling relationships. Sherry, thank you so much for being with us. Again, you guys can find everything at our website, schoolhouserocked.com. Make sure you stay tuned to the very end here, a clip of what's coming up next on the podcast, and we will see you back here tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. A mom said to me one time, aren't you worried about sheltering your children? And I said to her, we care more about sheltering tomato plants in the culture right now than we do about our precious children. And so if someone wants to accuse me of sheltering my children, my answer is always absolutely yes. I will shelter my child until I know my child can stand up against the elements of the culture so that they can grow to maturity. And we slowly begin to remove the shelter from around them as we see that they are mature and that they understand the battle lines around them and can engage the culture from a position of strength rather than weakness. If you count for your kids, like yeah. <laughs> I told you not to touch that, one, right. two, three, you're basically telling them they don't have to obey until three. Right. And so you're right. always going to count. It's deferred yeah. obedience. It's, it, And so if you want to count in public all the time and count in front of you, you're, <laughs> just know if you're going to do the counting, they yeah. will wait until you get to three before they finally, oh, okay, I won't. Because now, right. the, the, now is when the difficult's coming. And I tell you, if you're having a struggle with a child like that and they're constant, that means you've got a really smart kid. I mean, yeah. that makes it harder because they're able to think, oh, I can't touch this today, but maybe I can touch it tomorrow. I right. can't do it this way. Maybe I can do it that way. <laughs> they're creative in their sin. 